Hi, and welcome back to the Lorna Wisdom Schools podcast, the place where we connect with parents from around the globe to share our experiences on a variety of topics. We are a leading school and have been based in Singapore for over 40 years. We specialize in developing a lifelong love for learning, and our focus is on working with our parents to develop their children's 21st century skills and transforming them into the talented, critical thinkers of tomorrow. I'm your host, Marie Kutsia, Head of Speech and Drama at Lorna Wilson Schools, and today I am delighted to have as guest Victor Pung, who is a speech and drama and English teacher with us here at Lorna Wilson Schools. And so today we will be discussing a little bit more about how the art of stand-up comedy can actually better your teaching and engage your students more in the classroom. But this is not just for teachers and engaging your students. This is also for you as a parent or you as a storyteller. How can we engage our audience more through the art of stand-up comedy? Hi, Victor, and welcome to our podcast. How are you today? Thank you. I'm doing good. Thank you for having me. Yes, it's really great to see you. And before we start, I would just like to introduce you a little bit. And can you share with us a little bit more about who you are? Um, yeah, so I am a comedian and I'm also an educator. I teach for the LW online platform, uh, specifically the Write Up Speak Up program, which is a very interesting program. Yes, a very exciting program indeed. We, we merge the speech and drama and the English curriculum. And now this is not the first time I am seeing you. We have worked together for a number of years. And I think we actually met way back in 2014 when you started as a teaching assistant at Lorna Western Schools. Yes. And I remember us having a lot of fun in the classroom. And look at us where we're now. Building a podcast now. Look at how far we've come, moms and dads. <laughs> Right. And now we are talking about what we have learned and what we want to teach our audience, our parents and our students in regards to what you can do and what teachers also can do in the classroom to perhaps help them and um, to bring their lessons to life and engage students a little bit more. And so, yes, Victor, I've said this, but I'm very excited to have you today because I know you have a real passion for speech and drama and I know you have a real passion for what you do. And so you have also traveled the world to gain your education. So share with us a little bit more about that as well. Yes. Uh, so I'll just talk about how I first started teaching. Uh, I started te- first started teaching at London Western School when I was 19, which was not that long ago, I would like to add. Really? <laughs> uh, and actually, my first ever assisting teacher job was with you, Murray. I think it was the Saturday class at 4 p.m., if I remember correctly. So we have really come full circle. Yes, so I started as an assistant, a drama teacher, speech and drama teacher, and then I progressed on to becoming a support specialist in a speech and drama department, after which I went to uh, Britain to pursue my degree in drama and theatre, where I found my love for stand-up comedy, because... A fun fact, a first, my first ever, ever, ever stand-up comedy set to a public audience was my examination itself. And when I grew up, got a group of people laughing and like just having fun. And I just fell in love with the entire experience from writing to performing it. Oh. I think like stand-up comedy is kind of like watching a TikTok video. Once you watch one, you just go on and go on. <laughs> it's on addictive. <laughs> yes, it is very good. Yeah. Uh, from the reaction you get from the audience, but I think also thinking like you know all the effort and all the timing of that you spend writing, and you you can actually see your audience's reaction when you perform it live. Yes, and it's it doesn't lie to you. If it's not funny, you know it's not funny. It, you can't pretend it. So it's a very non pretentious form. I feel. Yes, definitely, because the audience is very honest. Mm. <laughs> No, that's wonderful. And so now you are still an educator and you teach English and you teach speech and drama and you still write some curriculum as well. But as you mentioned, your passion is stand up comedy. And so, yes, you're an educator. You are you're an educator in for English, educator for speech and drama. You are a curriculum writer, but you're also passionate about performing, especially stand up comedy. But 
there are some misconceptions about stand-up comedy that people have. And there's a kind of a stigma that goes with it. And before we delve deeper a little bit into like how we can use stand-up comedy in the classroom to support our lessons to engage students more, let's talk a little bit more about the stigmas that people might have and why those stigmas perhaps are wrong and why we should look at stand-up comedy as more of an educational value. So I think the biggest conception that people have about uh, stand-up comedy is you have to be born funny. I think that is not true. I don't think people are born funny, but what I do believe that is you need to have a point of view, an opinion about something, about anything in life. You need to have an opinion on it. Yeah. So I think that, I think good comedy tells the truth in a very surprising way. Yes, I don't think you need to be born funny. Steve Martin, as a stand-up com- comedian, puts it very nicely. He says, perseverance is a great substitute for talent. So just keep showing up, keep going. <laughs> you'll find your way. And I think the second biggest misconception is that it is very easy to do. However, when someone says it looks easy, I think that is a compliment, which means I've made it seem very effortless. I think that is when it's done well. When it's done well, then a comedy should look effortless. It's just a people, just a person talking, relating to a group of people. But there are so many intricate social interactions going on in just one split second, and you have to be aware of what's going on in the room. So I think that's where it's good for classroom management, where you have to pick up on things so quickly and then how to react to whatever is happening. Because as a stand-up comedian, you are performing in a present. There's no fourth wall for you to just block out your audience. No, your audience are the people that you are trying to gain approval with. Very much like a classroom. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and also students are honest. Yes. And you get live reactions of students when you're teaching and <laughs> for a teacher to actually react to what's going on in the classroom in a positive way, in the way that actually motivates students and not demotivates them is a skill. Yeah. Thank you, Victor. So yes, I really think those misconceptions, we should look past it and really see, look at the art of um, stand-up comedy. What are the most important things that you have now learned in your studies when you went overseas when you learn the art of stand-up comedy, what are the few things that you have learned that you brought back with you to Singapore and that you think you can utilize in the classroom? I think they have learned the gravity of words. Words are really powerful and you have to mean what you say. And additionally, Personally, the structure and the order of words really do matter. In comedy, they say put your funnest, funniest thing at the last. So think about how you structure your words and where do you want to place them. If, if you're writing a speech about, um, I don't know, about cake and you want people to buy your cake, <laughs> let's say. <laughs> I want to have some cake. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do want to have some cake too. <laughs> and if you want to try to sell, um, sell your cake, I think the more emotive part should be towards the end because that's what people remember best. So always put the more important part towards the end. Yes, I think that is that is uh, very refreshing for me, and also to make things efficient and smooth. As Shakespeare once said, brevity is the soul of the wit. Ironically, it was said during a Hamlet, which was a four hour long play. So I think Shakespeare missed that point. (laughs) (laughs) He really dragged it out there. (laughs) So comedy needs to be really, really fast. And when I look at my, uh, when I've written my first draft, my second draft is to cut out whatever that is not necessary. Uh, If I ask myself, if, is this piece doing a setup or is it making a punchline? If it's not doing either, I'll just take it out. And sometimes it kills you <laughs> to, to take it out, but you have to take it out. Yeah. I think someone has said that once you have edited it and take everything out, those that stayed really fought for their place. I think that's a very nice way oh. to say. And yeah. I actually think that TikTok makes a good platform to teach them about brevity because when you have a minute or so, to say what you want to say, you've got to be quick. Yeah. And we're succinct in what you say. 
Yes. Life nowadays is really fast. So you need to grab your audience's attention within a certain amount of seconds. And then you need to keep it till the end and leave them with something to yes. that they can take away to remember yes. you. And that joins in so well with what we do in the classroom as teachers, and as educators, in terms of teaching students how to structure your thoughts and ideas in a way that you get your message across in a, in a short and effective way and grab your audience's attention. And mm. what do they leave when you're finished? They need to leave with the thought. They need to leave with an idea. They need to leave with some sort of action that they want to take perhaps even. So I really like what you're saying in terms of like, it helps them with the structure. It helps them to understand that we don't have to always um, write thousands and thousands of words of essays to get our message across, but really think about what you say and also sometimes how you say it. And yeah. because we can write compositions that's beautiful on paper, but you also need to be able to deliver it. And how are you going to deliver it? Because if you deliver it in an effective way, it will have much bigger impact, right? Mm. Yes. It's and also about personality, like have a personality that to deliver the message that you want to be. You have to have a personality, to, the personality that makes you you, that makes the message that gives the message an extra touch. Yes, that's right. Awesome. Yes, that extra touch, that dramatization, that delivery. And I think that's really what we do in the speech and drama class. And I think you can also agree with me. That's how we very much approach our lessons and how we teach students to deliver their message. Now, now the question comes, right? You also teach English, which is a little bit more different from speech and drama. It's same, same, but different, of course. The approach, the teaching approach, it's a lot more sitting down, writing as well, discussing, reading. Um, but let's even think further, like perhaps a science class or a math class or wherever we learn something, okay? We learn content. Do you think that stand-up comedy is only effective in a speech and drama class where we have the opportunity to speak up and perform? Is it only performance-based? Or how do you see stand-up comedy perhaps being integrated into an English class? Or like I said, perhaps even if we go as far as a math or a science class. I think uh, stand-up comedy, the techniques of stand-up comedy can be introduced as a teaching practice and any subject I feel because teaching is a performance itself in, in a way so yeah uh, so I, what I like to do is I like to so when I do English with my students and then they're like different options so they choose the correct answer put it in the bracket and then when I try to explain why other things are wrong I use this I try to act out the wrong answer to make it really wrong and heighten it to really wrong, they go, oh, okay, I understand why that doesn't make sense now. Yeah, so in a way, it's a very stand-up comedy technique to just exaggerate the acting. You don't have to be like, use Stanislavski and like method acting, but you just need to show enough to let the audience know, okay, I know what you're saying and I get my point across and okay, I got it. I think I use that very, very often, especially with, I have a lot of English as second language children, so they don't know what's happening, but when you act it out, they, they will start to intuitively understand what's going on. I think that can apply across any subjects when you want to try to explain why something does not work and you know, instead this should work, then you can act it out and say, look how ridiculous this is. <laughs> this <Right. way." laughs> Yes, but life's a stage, right? I always say, um, you don't just have to act in a speech and drama class. We don't just act in an English class. We act in our daily life. No yes. matter what we do or what your passions are, some point in your life, you're going to have to kind of perform in front of people. But basically we perform every day because the way we talk in front of our parents, the way we talk in front of teachers, the way we talk in front of young kids are very different. It's a performance that we put on because we alter our performing style to who is our audience. And so, yes, I really think also to make things more engaging and interactive in the classroom for students to learn, not just by what you're saying, but also what you're doing and showing them different ways they can learn more because 
you know, we know students have different ways of learning and different ways to actually soak up information. Stand up comedy can really just bring a certain life to your lessons. It makes the subject a bit more fun. Yes. I think. More and engaging. Laughing, you know that they are paying attention as well because they are listening. <laughs> they get that you need to listen. So. Right. so it can really bring your stories, your classroom to life in terms of the delivery of the teacher. The teacher becomes more interesting for the students to listen to as well when you apply these different performing techniques. Also, when students deliver their work, they can feel more confident in knowing that they've learned these techniques and these skills and how to deliver effectively. Now, we know what it can do in the classroom. We know what it can teach students in a lesson and in different environments. But ultimately, what do you feel stand-up comedy can teach students? Now, perhaps life skills or perhaps when they leave the classroom, what can they take away from this art? And I think they can think of your art that it's your personality. So everything in stand comedy, it I think it just boils down to your personality. So my jokes, sometimes if I go to you, Murray, it might just sound very, very different and it does not work. So it's quite uniquely to them. And I think you can teach children to develop their own voice, their own thoughts. And I think that's very important because it makes you you. And if you don't have your voice, someone will do the talking for you, which we don't want that for them. So I think stand-up comedy would teach them to find a little own identity, what works for them, what does not work for them. And it also helped them to understand literary devices that I think a lot of students sometimes don't get, like irony or hyperbole. They, I think like stand-up comedy does really work the brain to get the joke that your brain needs to be alive and thinking yeah very good yes i definitely think that students can benefit from stand-up comedy a lot especially in as you've mentioned um you know having their own opinion learning how to say what they think without hurting anyone or offending anyone but realizing that their voice is important and saying it in a way that is entertaining saying it in a way that makes your audience listen to what you've got to say because we're all we're all different we all have our opinions we all have our things that makes us us and it's not you shouldn't be scared to show the world who you are and what you're thinking um Thank you so much, Victor. This was really, really wonderful to have a chat with you and Thank learn you. about what you have learned and the skill sets and what you're passionate about and how you bring that into your classroom when you're teaching students um, to keep your classes interesting. I can only imagine how fun and interesting it must be in one of your classes because I have seen you in the class. <laughs> you really, really teach with a lot of passion. And so thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for joining us today, Victor. And thank you so much to all of our listeners tuning in today to our podcast about how stand-up comedy informs educational practices. We hope that you found this useful and perhaps this might inspire you as an educator or a parent to learn a little bit more about stand-up comedy and how you can use this or start using this in your daily life when you present or share your thoughts and opinions to really grab your audience's attention and to ensure that your audience stays engaged. I'm Marie Kutsia, and this is your Lorna Wisdom Podcast. <music>